hopefully. Hold on. How about now? <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, we'll we'll go all over. Yeah, there was no sound there. Yeah, that's that's fine. The the mic for some reason got muted on my software here. So somebody so. somebody confirm they have sound now. <laughs> Someone um, else said no it's, sound. It's it's a little delayed. But yeah, there's a, there's all a little lag, but um, I'll I'll wait for the confirmation that you guys can hear us. Um, Speak louder. <laughs> I don't well, think I don't, I don't think there was actually any <laughs> pick yeah. up. Oh, uh, make sure that the um, there we go. I think there we go. Someone said huzzah. So I think that means they heard something. Okay. So yes, cool. Someone else. Said All right. That. So we're back at. We'll go. We're give you a little quick overview. Um, Adam Sadler here, Brady from Brady uh, Blacklist Games. We're here to talk to you about the future of Blacklist Games. Um, with what we have going on later this year and actually next week even, um, and then going into next year. Um, we have tons of Hour of Need card proofs that Brady has been pouring over the last few days, proofing, making sure everything looks right um, for final the final print run for Hour of Need. We also have the uh, PU samples, polyurethane uh, resin samples um, of the Hour of Need miniatures, which we can show you as well. Um, they look really good. Very, very happy with those. Um, Hour of Need was our um, Kickstarter from the about end of last year. About this exactly time, a year ago, I yeah, think. Yeah. About this time last year. Um, and it is uh, at the factory right now. They're, we're getting ready for mass production and getting that to backers as quickly as we possibly can. Um, we were shooting for December for delivery on that one, but it's, it's probably looking like it's going to be pushed back until you know January time frame. We'll have a better idea once the factory is done. Yeah, it's hard, um, it's hard to tell until... Not only is there delays at the factory, but there's going to be delays at ports and all that stuff because of COVID. So we're dealing with that. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, wait, got a question about Contra pre-orders going. Um, yes, Contra is available for pre-order on our website. They're going well, yeah. As as well as um, Buddy Cop, we just announced um, on Thursday, I believe. That's up for pre-order as well. So you can uh, check those both out of the website. We also have a an Indiegogo going on right now for the entire uh, Street Masters line. We're reprinting everything, plus a few new expansions, a couple new expansions. Sorry, um, so check that out on Indiegogo. That is a pre-order campaign, not a crowdfunding campaign. So, no matter what the funding level is at the end, we're, it's still going to be printed. Um, and there's no stretch goals. It's just what up, what you see up there is what you get. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this overhead combo here, and I turned off the autofocus on this thing. Um, from last time, we were having trouble showing off some miniatures. We um, want to talk about like in uh, chronologically what we have coming up, or are you just doing? Well, I was going to show off some Hour of Need stuff okay. first, um, since that's kind of yeah. Because I guess Hour of Need is, is at the the most current thing at the printer. So, um, so this right here is uh, a sculpt the sample of Micro Guy. He is. Um, you want to find his cards? We can show off his cards right after yeah. we show off the miniatures. Um, he's a hero in the Hour of Need base game. Um, if we had a miniature of the actual pilot of this mech, he'd be way too tiny. Um, so he's a token in the game. Um, Brady, I'll show you. Here's his card backs. Yeah, here's the, the the backs of his cards for his deck. There's his hero card has a back too. If you want. where's his hero card? Is it on this one? It's not on the show. Oh, there it is. Yep. So this is his. Uh, his yeah, hero cards are double sided. So that's focus his side. focus side. That's when he's in his mech. He um, so every every uh, hero in the game. We'll have two sides, kind of like in the Street Masters, you have a charge side, a regular side. In this, you have a focus side. You can do the other side, too. This oh, is yeah. all the cool art. That's his normal side he starts off with in his pilot. And he's kind of different because he can actually do different effects to make himself flip over between being a pilot or being in his mech. So you can kind of see through his art that he's a, he's a small dude that has the cool big mech suit he flies around in. Um, it's, but hard, it's, it's hard for me to do this backwards. So. Yeah, but he's, he's a... He's an engineering genius, so he's really good at solving problems when he's in his pilot form. And he's much more better at attacking when he's in his mech. And another hero from the uh, base game is... Wait, what's on that one? Gorilla? I'll show his Gorilla. miniature. Um, this is Gorilla. He's another hero in the base game. He's like a super soldier. He's uh, more... He's, he's bigger than most humans. Um, so he's... He looks kind of like a human, but as you can see... I'll compare him to a, one of the thugs. You can see he's... He's very, a super he's soldier. A very big, big, muscular, bulky guy. That's uh, huge. A couple questions here. Did the, was the delay relevant also to the fantasy series too? Um, actually, you know, fantasy series is actually on a on a much more accelerated schedule to keep up fantasy with. Series. That was fantasy series two. No, also, T O O. Also, because oh, oh. um, they're we tr we're trying to get those lined up so they kind of go out at the same time. Um, that's not a stipulation, but it's just ideal if we can get them both moving at the same time. Uh, so. And the delay is the delay is really just because the factory obviously is dealing with COVID things, and they also have lots of projects going on. 
So we're just trying to get things done as quickly as we can. That is a gorilla. And then did you supervise the development of Buddy Cop? Uh, yes, we were we worked a lot with Mitch. Mitch did Mitch did the original design, and he brought it to us, and we just... Supervised you know, as in approved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we uh, pretty much just said, yeah, this is great, let's yeah, do it. Yeah. Mitch didn't need very much management on that one. He yeah. did a great job with it. Um, and we'll show Mitch off... Is, uh, Mitch is our typical developer, so he does a lot of development work himself. We'll show off uh, Ma Ma Majesty's 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 here. This is uh, our Superman slash Wonder Woman... Uh, Captain America type character from the base Leader. game. And there's her card back since her, her hero card there. There's her card back. Um, has Beautiful. has there been a question regarding the next game using MDS? Is there a new IP? Um, currently, there's no plans right now. Well, we'll, we'll talk about our, our games coming up yeah, in, yeah. This, in this stream, yeah. actually. So um, stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, that's Majesty. And then we'll also show off Stride. Um, Stride. Her, her cards in the middle. There. She's uh, she's fast. She's a fast runner. She kind of reminds me of uh, her outfit. Kind of reminds me of A Train from The Boys. Yeah. Her hero cards in the middle. Always urgent. Here's her card backs. We'll show you a little sample of her cards. These sheets are really big, so. We got a lot of unique art, a lot of cool action scenes and stuff. And then, uh, is that, there's four heroes, right, in the base game? Four and then, and the then we'll get a four. villain. Let's see here. Where yeah. is. There's Dowager and the there's curtains. Dowager. There's Dowager. There's Dowager's miniature. There's her deck. And then every so, villain has their own villain deck. That's your her card back. So we got a, a customer. Uh, will there be? Oh, here. Uh, I'm going back up for some questions here. Um, will there be an add-on for Hour of Need in the Dire Alliance campaign? Uh, no, because no. that'll that'll yeah that we've already established the print run for that one. Um, we're hoping to do. Um, you know, future content for Avenue, obviously, depending on how it's received and all, but because, you know, it's a game I really want to support. So hopefully we can make it more widely available. So every villain also has their own um, lackey. lackeys in the game, like their henchmen. Um, this is Dowager's lackey. He is, what's his name? He's a stooge. Yeah, that's the stooge. There's four. A uh, couple questions here about Brook City content. Um, no current plans for Brook City um, content. Um, Buddy Cop is our, is our new Brook City game, or uh, Brook City themed game right now. Um, so no 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 news yet. Plans, yep. uh, what is the? Yeah, we love the card art. We have lots what, of cool styles in there. What does Curtin's miniature look like? I forget. Uh, <laughs> <these are, laughs> too many miniatures. There he is. Yeah, a lot a lot of capes in this. Yeah, obviously, there's so many so. capes in the um, Hour of Need miniature line. Uh, but this guy's really cool. He's uh, got his his theatrical masks. Very cool suit. And um, he has stagehands for his lackeys. Oh, these very organized with their clipboard uh, and their shotgun on their back. For the core game, don't forget them. They're, I'll find their cards. Yeah, I, will. I will forget them. Don't worry. I want. I want to talk about the. And there's the concept though. Card back. I gotta find their. Find out where they. Oh, that's the rest of curtains. A deck. Yeah. There's um, the stage hand. Oh, here we go. You don't have to show the cards, but that's there's the two cards there. Yes, yeah, so we also have two nemeses in the uh, core game. Yeah, so that's it's a really cool little addition snare. to the game. Uh, nemeses let you scale the game for players. It lets you scale it for difficulty, but also it's a player scaling thing. So that's why we made the game up to six players out of the core box. Um, if you, you There's only four heroes in the core box, but if you buy one of the expansions and you want to incorporate the heroes from those expansions, you can make... A game up to six players that's done by using these uh, these nemeses so for every player beyond four you add to the game you add a nemesis to the game and these are the two in the base game there's uh, snare and lovecrafter and these are where I really want to expand the game more this is where I was hoping we'd have um, a more we had lots of stretch goal yeah lots of stretch goal ideas for nemeses because it's a really cool concept to add to the game and I'm excited about adding more to them it's a very modular element and that's that's it for the core set characters right so we can uh, go yeah. over to uh, 
Um, There's a bunch of other cards for like the issues and like all the um, extra additional cards in the game, but we're just. Yeah, if there's anything you're like dying to see, feel free to let us know. We'll show you a little bit of everything, um, and then we'll show off the what's next, judge and jury. Let's uh, off. Yeah, judge and jury box would be. All right, so we'll show off we'll judge right first. Got that cool grappling hook. There's judge and jury's cards. Um, will the fantasy series be available as an add-on in the horror series? Yes. Um, is Freedom Five made by them? I didn't know. Uh, Adam and I worked on uh, Freedom Five with Richard Lanius um, from a few years ago, and it's finally yeah, it's yeah, really it's, being it's really Richard's baby. It's yeah. his, an evolution of his Defenders line, but we are very uh, we're super we're very flattered for him to offer like ask us to collaborate with him on that because he he knows you know we're big fans of his game. Yeah, we're fans of so. Lanius. We're fans of superheroes, so it was a pretty easy decision to to make that <laughs> to Here work with a few them. judges cards, judge in action. Can we see something of the horror series Dire Alliance minis? Um, we'll be talking about Dire Alliance here next after this. And there's lots of, uh, if you go to our website and our Facebook page, there's lots of teases of the miniatures in that line. Um, yeah, we have a lot of cards. I need that sheet probably for jury. Oh, I thought you were showing that. And uh, here's, I love that card. Here's Judge's faithful sidekick, Jury. This is a really cool pose, I think. Did you show that Judge card? I love that card. I'll show it, yeah. Can't wait for a sci-fi game. Yeah, we, we definitely want to do a sci-fi game. We have a lot of cool ideas for sci-fi minis. There's a card that Brady wanted to show as the witness protection there. Yeah, I love that card. I love art like that. Looks like straight out of a comic book. Um, and then there's some of Jury's cards. Jury's really good at um, saving bystanders. She's like the people's hero, so she's all about saving innocents. Shackle shot. How we determine the success of our Need for Future contest since Kickstarter is done? Is it coming to retail? Um, we will, we have, it's more about um, not just the numbers, but we want to see how it's just received. In yeah, general, how like much that, is how, talked about. Yeah. People that really like the game will will hopefully be vocal yeah, about if, that. Because if it gets good reviews and it's a good reception, that we'll know that if we do it another big project for it, that it would be well received. But and maybe not do it around when Marvel Champion is yeah. <laughs> But it's hard to kind of plan that stuff without having the, you know, the support and the, the hype. This is a uh, one-liner, the villain in the... Um, Formerly known as Punchline. Yeah. But. <laughs> um, and then this is her lackey, a hired gun. He's got a big gun, so it's fitting. Yeah, here's her cards. I like her deck, her card back. And there's the one-liner card back. Um, there's her villain card. Her scheming side. Yeah, the minis came out fantastic. I'm really happy with the minis. Some of her cards. They all they look very dynamic. There's her hired gun. So as you can see, this game is loaded with cool comic book style artwork. Um, and then we'll do Jim and Ice next, I suppose. That is, yep, that's next here. We find the. All right, we'll do the best hero in the game first. This is uh, Ice. He's kind of inspired by uh, a mixture of like Cyclops and Iceman, um, two X Men that I really, I really like. I mean, Cyclops is probably my favorite, one of my favorite superheroes. Um, I wish we had the uh, actual issue boards to show off too, because we have all the issue cards here, but the boards were just really cool. Lots of and there's Ice's sweet card back, very very blue. And here's some of his cards. Uh, you'll see Jim pop up every now and then in his cards. Yeah, they tend to work together, oddly enough. Every time I I say that name as a hero, though, I just think of, like, Jim. Jim, Jim Halper. Jimmy. Um, Jim Halper, here to James. save the day. James is here to help. <laughs> say Jim. Jim. And then, see, my wife always tells me there's very Jim. distinct ways to pronounce Jim versus Jim, but they sound the same to me. And here's Jim's miniature. Uh, he looks like a combination of, like, Superman and Vision. Um, his pose, at least. But his colors definitely remind me of Vision's... Uh, yeah, this it, color scheme was very much Vision's original costume, and then uh, there's a lot of Green Lantern uh, kind of aesthetics in, in there because he's got two power rings. And, and there's his uh, his deck. The, the cards look... The backs look cool together. It's a nice contrast of green, yellow, and blue. Yeah, Jim's whole uh, dynamic is he has these three Trinity uh, tokens he puts out on his cards to charge his, his powers. 
and he gets like additional power, additional gleam effects from his cards if he has uh, his gems charged. And this is, by the way, these uh, gym, the Gem and Ice and the Judge and Dury expansions, they're standalone expansions, so you can buy the, the, just that to play the game uh, as a one to two player experience, and then you can combine that with the core set to make it a, a six player game. Um, and here is the villain in that box, Astasia. She is very creepy looking. And her uh, lackeys are these shard eaters, kind of like space uh, pigs, space warthog, <laughs> mutant things with tentacles. Um, very creepy. They take the form of whatever planet they come on, and they're these like devouring entities, so they kind of take this like warthog persona on Earth. Yeah, and you can see Astasia's card back here. And some of the hurt villain cards. Dog's excited out there about something. And the shard eaters. She's probably the hardest, might be the hardest villain in the game. All right, currently. and that's that's it for the boxes, right? Oh, no, we have Divine Law still. Yeah, Divine um, Law. Now, I don't want, the one sculpt we don't have is Belt. Belt had a few tweaks that needed done. Um, I think we'll show off the... A photo of it in the um, in a Kickstarter update. Start if Scotty already has it, already hasn't already. Start with Terrorist. Uh, start with the uh, Wyvern. There's the one of the other heroes. So we have Belt. I'll show off Belt's cards. Yeah, but this is Wyvern, the other hero. These are two heroes in the uh, Divine Law expansion, which is another uh, standalone expansion. So it's this. Yeah. So you have four entry points to this game. Oh, oops, not that. Have you gentlemen thought about a wiki page on your website? You have so much character lore in your... Um, yeah, we have a, we have a, made an effort on that, but yeah, it's some, that's something we could do. Like we, built. we try to make it all published in the actual products, but having a digital collection might be kind of cool. As you can tell, this uh, expansion is very like martial arts themed, kind of like uh, Daredevil slash Iron Fist type... Uh, yeah, this, the, the, what do they call it? The... I forget if that's Marble Knights or Defenders or both. Defenders, but, yeah. Because yeah, uh, people call them Marble, Marble Knights. And then the Knights villain before. in the Divine Law box is the Terrorist. That's one of the coolest sculpts, I think, um, in the line. I just love that pose. And just yeah, and her, her villain deck is really cool. And then her, her lackey, this is also a really cool sculpt. This is the um, that Zodiac Assassin. Might be my favorite sculpt in the game. I love that. This would, this would work really well in a Street Master's. Expansion. <laughs> Divine Law could all could honestly just be a Street Masters product, <laughs> theme wise. Um, there's the Terrorist card back, and then here's some of her cards. Showing off the Zodiac Assassin. Where is the Zodiac Assassin card? There we go. Up there. Tons and tons of cards. And is that it for boxes now? We're just on... We just well, have stretch, stretch, stretch goals, minions, bystanders, and then the Jade Kid pack. These are the so I'll show you the Jade... We'll just show the Jade Kid pack. This, these are inspired by our daughters. Um, the Jade Kid is a cosmic superhero, and Annabelle, Annabelle is a bi special bystander. Um, and then... They have corresponding cards. Uh, Jade Kid has a whole deck for her hero, obviously. Um, and then... Annabelle's up here. Annabelle's over there. Special bystanders. So bystander, special bystanders are kind of another modular element of the game where there's generic bystanders in the map, but we can you can swap out special bystanders that have special effects that kind of you know change the game up. Yeah, a and bit. all the rules will be on the actual cards. It'll have a setup on there, and it'll have their special effects. And and the there was a minion bystander pack on the Kickstarter that upgraded the tokens to miniatures. So here are here are two of the special um, pinch like min minions we call them. Yeah, and they actually have. Where are the cards? Here are, are they two, on there? Oh, they're on there. Yeah, and here are the two bystanders. Yeah, so those also. So you can just use those as miniatures just to replace the tokens. But there's also cards included. So if you want to add a little more spice to your games, you can put these cards in to give them special effects. And those are they're in here on this pack right here. So operative, fierce citizen. What is that? Uh, bruiser. And then. Uh, what is that? Fling citizen. Yeah, those those they'll if you once you place them they'll be they're they're always placed farthest away from the heroes, so they're trying to get away from any All trouble. right, cool. So I think we've shown off quite a bit there. Stretch goals. Um I mean yeah, we can. There's a couple more left here, I guess. Well here's, those I wanted to mainly because those guys are gonna be there's Loxley. 
kind of like a Hawkeye slash Green Arrow type character. Typical archer, you know. There's the. Um, there's Acrid. She he was a stretch goal villain. This is a whole new villain deck for this guy, and he has his lackey are the Biofiends, which these are going to be made in a translucent green plastic, like a snot green. And his uh, there's Lockley's card right here. There's Acrid's villain deck. Kind of like a mixture of. Like Mr. Freeze and Clayface or Two Face <laughs> type stuff. There's the Biofiend. And Fault, you'll see Fault here. This is uh, one of the Stretch Goal heroes as well. There's a card back. And there's her, her miniature. And then there's also yeah, there's one more. Of, there's time frame. There's a lot of people who didn't like that pun, right? <laughs> I'm, Which one? I'm Loxley. <laughs> yeah, you guys, if you don't like a name, you can really just uh, blame Brady on that. He likes <laughs> to name things in funny ways. Um, so that's uh, most of, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Like, Yeah, these are just the boxes. They're just the right? boxes, like, nothing exciting. This is a cool thing to show. I don't know if you want to show yeah, this off, show. but this is like, these are the dividers. This is pretty much all the decks in the game. From across all the boxes, so have yeah, the and every boards. product will have what we call what we have a miscellaneous divider. So those boxes, if you just want to put like the turn cards or things, you know, whatever stretch goal stuff, yeah. whatever. Because like for example, for Alter Quest, we didn't have a uh, like a divider for like search cards, like because catch also. because yeah, because I mean, there's just they're not like huge decks, so we wanted to give people dividers to use for whatever they want. There's not a late pledge for this, but um, it, there was since since multiple is, late pledge. <laughs> there yeah, were a couple. We, well, we, yeah, they, we, 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 not we, anymore. Yeah. But um, since QML is going to be doing this, um, we'll be able to have whatever remaining stock for sale afterward in the web store. So we're and trying we, to get better at that, where we can have actual stock to sell. So. We really do hope that it's successful and people like it, because we would love to do like a follow up Kickstarter with some kind of a, like yeah, a story box or something. We have lots of ideas. ideas for it. It's uh, and we'll do lots. We'll do playthroughs when we get our final copies um, to show off the game. To people who might not know, a lot of people didn't know what it was. They thought it was just Street Masters, but superheroes. Yeah, it was. Or like, it, it is. It's kind of a more, little more tricky to position because it does a lot of things all together. It's got the tactical combat. It's kind of got the high level crisis management. Um, and it, it. I think you have to experience it more than just seeing it on the table. Not to say it's like a super innovative game that people don't understand it, but it's just it is a little more hard to fully explain what that product is. But once people get it and start playing it, I think it's going to speak for itself. So. All right, so that was Hour of Need. That is coming up soon, hope, uh, hopefully early, early next year. Um, we'll be delivering. And again, if it, we'll, we'll watch the reception. If it does really well, we would love to do more with the game. Um, there's already tons of content available for it, but we would love to print more of it <laughs> to get it out there to more people um, and also expand it in different ways, like things like uh, like a story box. Like, like for example... We'll use Marvel Champions as an example because people compare it to it, but they had that um, Rise of Red Skull campaign box, which is a cool way to expand the game into a campaign game, but it still plays just like the same. Yeah, because um, it's not it's not like a the campaign's not core and central to the experience. It's more just something you can add to the side, and like you can play it this way as well. We like having options like that as opposed to making a game where it's fully a campaign. Like Gloomhaven's fully a campaign experience, and it's the best way to enjoy it. That's kind of a turnoff for me sometimes because I don't always want to just play that way. I like yeah. having the options where it's you can play really fulfilling one offs, but also time together if you want. Because I still prefer like Marvel Champions as a one off game, yeah. but it's cool with the options there. So we definitely have ideas to do more things like for that for our need. Um, so hopefully. People like it, and um, I hope so too, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, we hope so too because I really want it. Would love to do another uh, campaign for it. All right, so that brings us up to um, Alter Alter Quest is getting ready to deliver world worldwide. Um, it's already been delivered in Australia, New Zealand. Um, Quartermaster is on the cusp of getting it out there to everybody, which uh, we're excited to get that into your hands. Um, Fantasy Series One is that was our last Kickstarter. It is in production right now, shooting for that December time December time frame. Um, but we'll have a better idea once production is fully complete. Yeah, we feel like delivering. that. We feel like that and our need will be kind of similar timelines, so we're trying to push them together, you know. And if anybody hasn't looked yet, we had a live stream showing off all nine eighty nine sculpts or whatever from that Kickstarter, the the samples, and they look really good. I mean, I'm very excited for those. Um, and that'll 
Fantasy Series 1 will lead into something we're talking about today as well, um, so we're excited about that. And that brings us up to what's happening in two days. Um, we are launching a Kickstarter for our next project, um, which is Dire Alliance Horror. This is going to be launching on Kickstarter um, October 27th, which is Tuesday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, not sure about you, what everyone else, but I'm really in the mood for horror right now. Yes, uh, this time of year just gets me really psyched about it. So, um, and as you'll see on this graphic here, uh, if you back on the first day, you'll get a free gift um, with the count leader, uh, which is his miniature and six cards. And anybody who misses out will be able to pick this up as an add-on. Um, for it's not very expensive, but. First day, backers, free gift, hard to pass up on that. Help us fund on day one, you know. But it is important it. to note that, you know, if you do back on day one and want that gift, don't cancel your pledge. If you want to adjust it, you can still do that, but make sure you don't cancel your pledge because it has to be the first day backers to get that gift. Yeah, that's how they track it. Um, but yes, this game, uh, we will talk, we've will talk. we talked about this quite a bit before, but we will uh, kind of go over a quick overview of it. It is a game we worked with um, David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin. Um, they are the the fellows who designed War Chest, War Chest Undaunted, Undaunted Normandy. Undaunted Normandy is the game we played that Brady brought over to my house. We played it and we thought to ourselves, you know what, we should do a game like this uh, with Blacklist because we need a we need a first of all we need a good competitive game. We we have so many co ops. We want a, a competitive game we could ho- offer. Okay. And while I never I never personally use the moniker deck builder for either Undaunted or for Dire Alliance. Um, it is it is a deck builder. So like I thought it'd be really cool to have a really cool deck builder in our catalog, but not just a, not just a deck builder because that's you know there's a lot of those and nothing wrong with that. I, I like a lot of deck builders, but um, this is the kind of deck builder I wanted for our catalog. So it came out exactly what we were hoping for. So we're pretty psyched about that. Yeah, it is a tactical deck builder um, where you're you're building cards for units to make them uh, have more options, but also have give them more health, more durability on the on the battlefield. Um, but we also decided that we wanted to offer, um, st- still offer colo, solo co-op play because that's kind of what we, we like to it's play. It's called colo. I like that. Colo. Colo. Um, yeah. <laughs> so co-op solo. What, what David and Trevor have is the battle mode of the game. Um, and in the core box, there's also uh, raid mode, which is something Brady and I have helped them with. And that is um, solo co-op. Uh, you play as uh, here, one to four heroes fighting off the monsters and villains that are that are featured in the game. Like in battle mode, you play as a faction of monsters. Um, or, led, or, led by a very iconic troops. monster. That's the idea. Which is modular. You can yeah. choose whichever leader with whichever faction you want and mix and match to make your own faction. Um, but in, in raid mode, you play as a hero and you pick a class. So again, more modularity. Um, and then you pick a faction to fight against and a villain to fight against. So you can mix and match all different kinds of stuff. And the goal is that this is our first product project in the dire lions family and in the future we want to do more dire lions projects and different themes that you can mix and match so if we did a, for example like a sci-fi game or something you could play sci-fi characters versus the horror characters um kind of like a unmatched yeah thing. Unmet, yeah yeah so you the products are compatible with each other so you're mostly just like bringing out new sets that you can just you know, have buy any one you want and mix and match any one you want so i want to fight the countess and team them up with the alien faction against this fantasy faction or whatever it is so that's and the idea now if that wasn't enough having two games in in one it's actually pretty a very affordable game as well because it's just tokens and cards and, and it's a board game it's not a bunch of miniatures however um we're blacklist games are teaming up with blacklist miniatures for this project and we're doing uh horror series one miniatures that are going to be available on this kickstarter as well you can pledge for just the game just the miniatures, or you can pledge for a combo pledge for both of them at a discounted price to get everything. Um, and each pledge, for example, the game pledge comes with their own stretch goals. The miniatures have their own stretch goals. So you can whatever pledge you get, you're going to get stretch goals out of it. If you pledge for both, you get both things plus all the stretch goals. Uh, so it's going to be a great value. Um, and anybody who has backed our previous Kickstarters knows what we like to do with our Kickstarters. Um, and I think Fantasy Series 1... Um, took off really toward the end because people started seeing the value in the amount of the miniatures they were unlocking. Um, and we kind of want to offer the miniatures uh, for this one. is gonna They're going to be horror-themed, like classic gothic horror, um, but we want to make sure they're kind of also usable in fantasy as well because people um, like to have like you know horror, dark fantasy-themed games and their role-playing games, such like that. So all the miniatures in Horror Series 1 also work for fantasy as well. So... 
Um, any questions about that as we uh, discuss Dire Alliance? I've been watching. I don't see any. Okay. The questions. Yeah, we've out. we've talked a lot about it. There's there's some designer diaries on Blacklist Games website, um, which kind of goes over some of the uh, features of the gameplay. Um, there are there will be tabletop simulator demos um, available during the Kickstarter. I believe they're they've been linked already for the Spiel Digital, so anybody who wanted to try the game out can do so now. Um, I believe there's also demos for Contra and Buddy Cop, so. Um, uh, our team has been demoing those. I know Scotty and Mitch was doing that. Um, so they've been busy promoting those games, and you can. We want people to try this out during the Kickstarter so they know what they're going to be getting. Um, we're very proud of the game. Very excited about it. It is not only is it our first competitive game for for Blacklist, but I think it's also one of the quicker playing ones. Oh, it yeah, plays yeah, very quick. Yeah, very quick. Um, well. Our read might be in there too because those yeah. time frame. We're aiming for those those quicker time frames, but the same exp like you know robust experience. So pretty much just less processes to go through while you're playing the game. So it is definitely one of our quickest games. All right, so that is Dire Alliance. And that is pretty much the last pro obviously the last new project that we'll, they'll be doing this year. Um, but because it, it's launching next week, a couple days, we hope to see everybody there. Um, after that. Next year, uh, we have some little teases. We can sh we can show off a couple things. Uh, we can talk about more. Um, yeah, someone asked, did you say design the co-op mode for Dire Alliance? Yeah, so we, we handled the, um, we took the raid mode for Dire Alliance. Um, we based it on the battle mode system that um, David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin built. We just modified that and made the raid mode. So we, we did design the raid mode, but it was based on the mechan. So they share a lot of the same mechanics. We just collaborated on it, so. So we've teased this uh, at the Gen Con live stream. We, uh, are been, we've been working with uh, James Hewitt and Sophie Williams um, from Needy Cat Games. They uh, designed things like Hellboy. Uh, I know James worked on uh, Blood Bowl and Blitz Bowl, which I really liked Blitz Bowl. It was, it was a great little um, intro game to the Blood Bowl universe. Um, we, uh, we've been working with him on a new game, and we haven't talked about it yet, but we are now going to tease more about it. Um, we are working on him, um, on a new fantasy football game with James Hewitt, which I'm super excited about. Um, it is also going to be another competitive game on our line, but we're going to be working with him to make it have an, a solo play option, something that I've been dying for in a fantasy football game, because I never have enough, I never have opponents to play like games like Blood Bowl or Blitz Bowl with, so having a solo option even would I, be great. Even though I play it. Yeah, but come on, you know. I guess like, you get tired of smashing the I mean, ones, but... <laughs> he's, he's not always here, uh, you know. It's, it's, it'd be nice to be able to practice myself. So um, we're going to be working on, a, we're, we are working on a game with him. Um, very excited about it. Um, it is called Myth and Goal, and it is going to be a board game. I'll type with, that in the chat so people can see what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> myth uh, and Brady's proud of that because playoff, goal. you know, fifth and goal. It's not <laughs> mythical. It's myth and goal. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be a board game, um, and it's going to, uh, it's not going to have miniatures in the board game. However, we are going to be offering, with Blacklist Miniatures, a line of fantasy football miniatures um, that will be usable in any fantasy football game you can think of, um, but also work in uh, Myth and Goal. And also Myth and Goal will be designed that you can utilize your existing fantasy football miniatures in that game as well. We kind of want to embrace that where um, use your collection, add to your collection, we want to give you options. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, it's going to be early next year, Kickstarter. Um, and we have... We have a tease of one of the uh, the sculpts, so you can see like the miniature style we're going for. This is a human, uh, well, I think most fantasy football games would call it a lineman, but we're gonna call it a sentinel. Um, this is a, a sculpt. This is kind of like the test sculpt of the style we're working with the sculptor on, and there are a few tweaks to this, very minor, and they're not gonna change the look of this. But this is kind of what we're going for, and I'm I'm really into this. I'm not sure how many you know Blood Bowl fans we might have you know in this chat, um, but I'm sure there are lots of Blood Bowl you know fantasy football fans that would want different kinds of miniatures to add to their collection, um, and they are going to be in scale with with the you know popular Blood Bowl or fantasy football style miniatures that are out there on the market already. Yeah, and some people might consider the the fantasy football hobby tabletop uh, market. 
like niche because um, I, I honestly Adam got into it before I knew much about it I just knew what Blood Bowl was based on that video game we played when we were younger and I just knew about it because I'm a GW fan but um, I, I, I was kind of just kind of on the sidelines when it came to like the fantasy football and stuff but then Adam picked up Blitz Bowl which I, I 100% highly recommend it's a very affordable game you can get it at Barnes and Noble and stuff it's a blast. It's so it's such a good game. It plays it, super it got, fast. Yeah, yeah, it got me into Blood Bowl really because it just it's, there's there's more scoring going yeah, on. Like it's so it, cool. It, it, Blood Bowl is a very is a very old old game. It's been around for a long time and, and the designs you know dated in some respects. It's a very long game, but Blitz Bowl kind of injects new life into that that type of game, and that's kind of what caught my attention and what made me reach out to James saying, "Hey James, I want to do something like similar like this, but in a different, slightly different." Kind of, you know, in between those two extremes of Blitz Bowl and Blood Bowl, but leaning more towards Blitz Bowl. So, someone caught my phone on the sideline. <laughs> yeah. So that is, um, we're gonna have more to talk about with this very soon. Um, you know, we didn't want to, we don't have a ton to show for it yet because we we're still working on it with James. Um, but we're very excited about it, and I wanted to show off uh, just the style that we're going for. Um, I know, you, you know, there's lots of different teams in fantasy football humans are kind of like some might say boring but i always i always play humans for some reason um but we wanted to kind of set that standard first get the human sculpt going and then we'll build from there and then do the halflings in, in order <laughs> well yeah um so yeah um we can answer any questions you might have but we don't have a ton of information to give yet because we kind of want to make sure everything you know is locked in design wise um but we're Super excited working with James and Sophie on this, and we can't wait to show more. Um, so I said the fantasy football lurker pack for Ultra Quest. I just imagine <laughs> some like linebacker was sacking somebody. <laughs> oh, they're sacking the <laughs> from the um, shadows. <laughs> so yes, that is uh, that's what's coming up uh, early next year. Um, also next year we're going to be doing something we've talked about again um, in the past, but we're going to lock it in. We're doing um, fantasy series two uh, miniatures line. Um, because people have been asking for it already. Um, we haven't even delivered Fantasy 1 yet, but people are already here for more. They want season. They want Series 2. Um, so we definitely want to give people what they want. Um, however, we, we've we been talking. We want to offer... Um, we don't want to just do just a miniatures Kickstarter again. We want to offer a game with it. Um, and so we've been we've teased this in the Fantasy Series 1 Kickstarter, uh, Lasting Tales, which is a... A new game for Blacklist Games, and you know we're doing a lot of new things. This one is something we haven't done yet. We're doing a tabletop miniatures style skirmish game um, called Lasting Tales, and it is going to be a solo cooperative game. Um, we're still debating having you know optional rules for for com competitive play. People want that, but the focus is going to be solo co op play. Um, yeah, because I think there's a lot of options if you want um, just straight up competitive uh, small scale skirmish games. Um, not to say we can do something different, but we just really want to kind of fill that, um, what we feel is kind of a void that needs to be filled is just a really compelling, you know, campaign driven, uh, co-op, uh, skirmishing. Yeah. And we, we can't make an official announcement about this yet, but Bray and I've been talking, we've been working on ideas for the game for a while now. Um, but as you probably can tell, we are getting very overwhelmed with projects as far as things we're managing because we work with not only our own game ideas, but we're, we're VP of product development now. So we're managing, Lots of different aspects of the publishing industry, you know, business. So we're we have our hands in a lot of projects. Um, we don't we don't feel that Lasting Tales is getting the attention it deserves. So we are actually um, in discussions right now with a very very well known uh, tabletop miniatures designer Le <laughs> um, that is interested in the project, and we will announce hopefully announce that very soon once everything's locked in place. But uh, rest assured, the game will be in very good hands. Um, uh, I feel like I'm very excited. I'm way more excited about it than I was, knowing that it gets it's getting the attention it deserves. So, real quick, somebody asked, um, "Do you know when the fantasy football game is coming?" Um, just we think early. We're shooting early next year, early yeah. 2021. Um, Ideally, spring. It's yeah, like a good sports time. You know, um, it, we with that, our goal is to have you know a spring Kickstarter and a summer Kickstarter, um, and even maybe even fall Kickstarter. Um, obviously plans change depending on how long things take or where they fall in the schedule. But our, our goal is definitely early, you know, sometime springtime, hopefully. So, um, and then somebody else asked, uh, 
well, Lasting Tales have rules for interacting with terrain or features. That's the idea because um, that's one of the biggest elements of tabletop skirmishing is having cool terrain, you know, building a cool scene. So, yeah, it'll definitely have uh, rules in there about how to use, you know, that, use your terrain. And That is another thing that we can't announce officially yet, uh, but we are we are talking with a company who makes really good really terrain. cool tabletop terrain. Um and it's not training you have to paint. It's it's ready to go. You know, you just assemble it and you're good to go. Um, we're talking to them about doing an official like line of terrain for Lasting Tales that they would offer as well. Um, we can't announce that officially yet, but we're working towards that because we want to offer people the whole package. You know, you get your pre-assembled miniatures from the, our Fantasy Series 1. You get, you know, the game from us, and you go here for the terrain. You're good to go. You got everything you need to have a really cool tabletop miniatures experience. So... I would say it's almost going to be like a tabletop miniatures role playing game. That's kind of what we're going for. Is you know, imagine playing Dungeons and Dragons encounters on a three D terrain. You know that that's what we're that's what our vision for the game is. So somebody asked uh, or somebody said thank you for doing Tide of the Dragon. Um, so I'm not sure if we mentioned that much with our current. I know this is kind of the future of, but I don't know if we mentioned like in the current plans we still have that. Um, yes, the, we, we did. The Street Masters. We did mention the Street Masters yeah. project Indiegogo, and um, one of the aspects of that is the Tide of the Dragon expansion was um, it was part of... We, we were um, working with Alex Lim, who was involved in a project uh, called Dragon Tides that had some issues years ago um, where the, some backers didn't get the game or whatever, and Alex really wanted to work with uh, us to, to for a solution to offer his backers something yeah, um, it, was, and it so, kind of threw that train that localization for street masters into the chinese market that's how this kind of all came about so yeah. was the opportunity to kind of you know he helped us get get uh street master translated for the chinese market um through uh, raw stone games uh, but he also wanted to do a new do a new product for the back we thought it was a great match uh to have like a you know dragon tide style characters um in street masters and so we worked with him to do this standalone project uh, product that uh scott mcfall our brand director and mitch schroeder designed actually uh, mitch has been busy with us <laughs> um but they put together this uh, standalone expansion using the street masters system um and that's being offered in the indiegogo uh reprint as well yeah. so that's we're really excited to offer that um and to he, his backers and, and he asked are you guys martial arts movies fans they are yes yeah. <laughs> we, we, we like them just we're not like you know diehard we, fans we we, we <laughs> Brady and i grew up with double dragon streets yeah, of rage like, like th that's our martial arts beat old up games. Beat up games. Like, uh, we played tons of those um but we we were we were never like I mean, we watched like Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, we, we, we like them. We just we weren't diehard fans. Yeah, we were like enthusiasts. Yeah. We just kind of you know passingly enjoyed yeah. them. Our, our our interest was always the beat 'em up video games. That that was our huge. That was our big inspiration when we were kids. Like that, we played those like crazy. So he had a, another question here about the um, about the myth and goal. Um, was there a thought of doing a different sport that besides American football? Um, because there's you know Blitz Bowl, Blood Bowl, Guild we, Ball. Um, and he's asking, like, you know, maybe what about soccer, baseball, or even basketball? We, I, I think the idea was mostly just the aesthetics, like yeah. the football aesthetics, because it's so kind of universal in a lot of these. But, but we, also, we also want, like I said, we want to embrace. Um, there, there's this huge um, fan base that they, they, they people still play blood. They're very like ravenous, <laughs> and they, they buy. There's third party companies out there that make miniatures. Uh, they, they release these team packs for you know. Here's the human team line of miniatures and they're like really expensive highly detailed uh, you know f you have to assemble them yourself miniatures um and people like that people just want different options for teams as aside from just what you know the main company offers um but we kind of wanted to embrace that that community saying you know like we i i love blood bowl and blitz bowl as well i want more teams to off you know to buy and offer but i also don't want to spend tons of time assembling miniatures i do like assembling miniatures but sometimes i just want to have miniatures ready to go out of the box um, because I assemble so much. Um, so we just want, thought it'd be cool to offer a different option. And uh, we also, like I said, I loved what James did with Blitz Bowl, but I had ideas to push a little further. Um, and I kind of wanted him to explore those with us. So that's kind of why we started with uh, football. Um, I definitely am open to doing other sports in the future because I think it's cool doing fantasy sports. Um, however, I think I think football is a good place to start. Um, it, it'll get people that already into that theme interested and try out our games and i think that and that when they see what we're working on they might they might like it even better than what they played before so we'll see um 
Someone else asked, have you taken into account the possibility of ever going to GameFound instead of Kickstarter if ISS Vanguard kills it? <laughs> well, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We, wait. We've, we've actually we've talked to GameFound. We, yeah, we, we have a lot of meetings with GameFound. And it's not it's obviously something that would be easy to do. I personally don't feel like it's going to replace Kickstarter. Um, it is going to well, be a nice we'll alternative, I think. We'll, we'll but, see how it goes. I mean, yeah. it very well could be a huge success because it's built for board games. Yeah, it'll help um, the, yeah, the board. Yeah, when I say replace Kickstarter, I just mean like the fact that people will still be using Kickstarter. You know, it won't like, you know, pretty much un- it won't kill it. But um, we're definitely open to it. Like yeah. we, we we use them for a pledge manager, and we we love it. So we're always open to new yeah. ideas. Yeah, I like that it's modeled very much to to kind of fix problems that exist. Yeah, with, and, and board gamers have with Kickstarter. Like it's it's geared toward board game funding and fulfilling. So yeah. it's 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 definitely lined up to I mean, do very well. One of the biggest drawbacks from Kickstarter is the fact that you have to have separate systems for yeah. the Kickstarter and the pledge manager. So like roll out into one would be amazing. Um, so hopefully it does well. Yeah. And I'll be well, I'll be back in there for sure cuz I think it looks like a cool game. I've been following the development of that game and it looks like a neat little project. So well, I see, I see big res- project. I already see wrestling themed game like Rumble Slam. I I we've we've, we've always wanted to do like a wrestling we kicked around game. a lot of ideas for it. it it's really hard to to that, I represent that on a board game because yeah. wrestling is so formulaic. You know, it's like you you follow. You almost st- have to abstract it because yeah. if you make it too tactical, it becomes like. I mean, there's ways to do it, obviously, but it's like you kind of want it to be tactical because it's a fighting like you know and plus, it's a cool arena. And I think Rumble Slam does it well because they have. It's not like one on one wrestling. It's like a team yeah. versus team thing. So it's more like a like a Royal Rumble, a team based yeah. Rumble. So that, that's that's a good way to do it. I think. Any plans for more Brook City content? Nope. Uh, not not to announce. Um, Brooks, Brook City right now, the, we're focusing on um, promoting Buddy Cop, which is the new card game set in that setting. Um, and again, we talk, we mentioned this in the other stream. We don't have any immediate plans for Brook City to announce just yet. So, um, Someone asked about a second edition of Brook City. Like, yeah, nothing to announce yet, but we, like, that's the problem is we do have great ideas for... We have too many ideas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for a different Brook City game. But with the Brook City that exists, we have no plans to develop that further. But um, I always would love to do another edition. When you say no plans, we have no plans to announce. We always yeah. have things we're discussing. Right, right, but, yeah, yeah. No, um, no, no. Yeah, we're talking next next year. Uh, no immediate plans for Brook City. Uh, Upcoming so Cyberpunk twenty seven seven will create an immense hype for this kind of sci fi settings. Do you have any plans? That, I mean, that you're right, um, but that's kind of uh, something you don't always want to jump in on because it might be really crowded. <laughs> because I know, for example, Simon's doing um, a, a Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven game, so that'll be you know. You could we're, have, we're always sick of competing with CMOS. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and and like you have a lot of people who are trying will be trying to do like knockoffs of that. Um, and I say knockoffs. I don't mean that in like a negative term. I just mean you know their own version of that IP. So it's not something you always want to jump in on and, and be one of the other you know millions following along. So I we don't have immediate plans to to take advantage of that hype because I think it's already being done. But but we do have ideas for sci-fi stuff. Yeah, that yeah. We, we would love to explore. Yeah, th- we have like sci-fi stuff that would transition to, into cyberpunk stuff as well pretty easily. So um, we also um, we don't have a lot to 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 say about this just yet. Um, but we have been. We we go back. We'll go back to questions in a minute here. But I just wanted to jump in with other teaser real quick about next year. Um, we we have Contra. Um, we we've that kind of opened the door to us working with uh, licensed properties, which um, the team has been exploring more. And we do have another one coming up next year, a licensed property we can talk about. Um, we're just going to mention it. We don't give any like too many specifics about it. Um, but here's a little tease of it. We have uh, Mitch. Mitch Schroeder's new game coming from uh, Blacklist Games. Uh, he worked on a. He's been still working on a game uh, in the Bruto license. Um, so that is going to be coming. It's next a very. Year. It's we won't get into details, but it's very cool. It's yeah. a very very cool game. We we he pitched the game to us. We played it one time. Like okay, this is this is solid. Let's you know keep keep going with this. We lo- we love this direction. Um, it's a very quick playing game. Um, that's I think I think Mitch is that's his kind of bread and butter. Like he's really good at, at making these. Really quick playing, but deep games. Yeah, something I'm jealous about. Cause I, I personally love small, smaller box games. I've always had this penchant for them as a fan. I just never have gotten a chance to really. Well, you know, Warhammer Quest and and Heroes Tearing Off were kind of smaller box, but not not the smaller box that I want. Like I want even smaller. But uh, Mitch is really good at these kind of small box, uh, big experiences in small box games. Yeah, and if you haven't had a chance yet, um, try out the uh, Buddy Cop demo that was available um, on Tabletop Simulator. Uh, that would be a good example of what we're talking about. So yeah, and I'm I'm not, I'm the first to admit I'm not super knowledgeable about the Bruto, Bruto um, anime. I just know that 
Um, I I know enough f- from playing the game of what the experience is, but it's 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 fantastic. It's going to be a really cool game. So any fans of that of that license will be very pleased, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, somebody said I almost fell out of my chair, Bruto. <laughs> so that's good, good. good to see we have some fans. So. <laughs> um, so we can go back to those uh, other questions. I think I saw something about lurker cards. Is that what the next question was? Um, yeah, the will the horror miniature line include lurker cards for Ultra Quest? Um, not planning to because the the appeal, the big thing about Dire Alliance is the miniatures will have gameplay components with Dire Alliance. So yeah, that's, yeah. That's, we don't want to keep tying everything because because I mean you you kind of create some sour feelings if you try to tie in uh, stuff with other things from the, from the catalog, but not everything from the catalog. So it's like it's hard to kind of. It's hard to do some, but not all. So we'd rather just focus on what you know, what's at hand right now, and that's the Dire Alliance yeah. package. So while we would love it if uh, fans of our games backed every project we do, we don't expect that. We want you know, some people might just be interested in certain games in our catalog, so we don't want to make them feel like they're missing out on things by not backing stuff that's not associated with that with that project. While we do have certain promos that will be like crossovers, um, it's not going to be like every single project we do. So yeah, and it's something too where it's it's a struggle because there's the business side, but also the personal side. I personally don't like mixing. I, like I'm very uh, thematic in the sense where I don't like to mix theme stuff. So like I have trouble ever wanting to put things from different games and other games. I just I don't want to do that because I want to keep things kind of separate. Um, that's just kind of a personal quirk, but I know not everyone's the same way. So it's a struggle between that and, and knowing what people want with their promos. So. <laughs> now, and also just teasing that license, um, we while that's like about the whole all we can talk about with that, because uh, licensing pro- license projects brings its own restriction about what we can talk about. Bray and I can tease all the stuff that we have in our heads all the time, but when it comes to license stuff, we have to be careful. But I will mention that the one, the Bruto is one we could actually show. There are, we also have a couple others that are being worked on as well. Yeah, we license yeah, properties. Um, yeah, there, so. there, there. We could say right now there are two other active licensed games being developed in in house. So, um, so yeah, we'll talk about those more as we can. But right now we just can't can't talk more about them. So, yeah. so I, I think was any uh, other questions we're missing out or? Uh, I think we're all caught up. Okay, cool. So yeah, that that's um, what the, we have. You know, we're not going to tease. We can't beyond. tease past that. Past yeah, we can't, we can't uh, go Fantasy Series 2. Because, yeah, Fantasy Series 2 is probably going to be summer. Yeah, um, it's, good, it's so. good. We're going to refer to that as Lasting Tales because the, the Kickstarter yeah. will be... It'll include Fantasy Series 2, um, but it'll be the Lasting Tales game. That's kind of what the Kickstarter is going to be. Just like Myth and Goal will be the... Couple we'll be focusing on the game, but the miniatures will be there as well as uh, to support the game, but also being available separately. So, A couple questions here. Um, I know it's not in everyone's hands yet, but Alter Quest had such a successful campaign. Do you think you'll want to return... To this world in the future that's all going to depend um it, it basically it's uh it's like i always say it's weighing about what we want to do but also what what is good for business you know what is good for the fan base yeah, what they want so popularity is, is is a big factor but also uh playing through the content for example like yeah. um alter quest unlocked a lot of stuff so i mean that's a couple years worth of content right there so if if people love the game but people love street masters but they their constant thing is i can't i'll never play through all this stuff so we don't want to give people too much stuff where they'll never be able to, never be able to experience it. Um, however, if if Alter Quest turns out to be like something that people play too much and they're out of content and they're dying for new stuff, that will definitely affect our decisions. But yeah. um, obviously we have lots of ideas for fun projects, so we're never short on projects. Yeah, yeah. Um, when, when do you plan to include localization of your projects? That all depends on in- outside interest because we can't always be the ones to instigate that. It's more if, if we have partners that want to work yeah. with us. It's always um, relying on partners because yeah. they handle the, they actually take the project, they translate it, they print it, all that stuff. So lots of big publishers have partners, all the worldwide partners that do, you know, localization of their games. We did have that. Um, we took a, a step in that direction with uh, Raw Stone Games translating um, Street Masters into Chinese. Um, we definitely want to do more of that. It's always up to you know partnerships and how we can get that ball rolling. So, what is your opinion on legacy elements in games? Are you open to doing this in your games, like hidden contents? Um, Runes of Arcspire has Runes of Arcspire has hidden um, like unlockable content, um, but it's not legacy because it's not like you're changing the game because. There's a there's a kind of um, I think a confusion about the definition of legacy. People sometimes conflate campaign play or like unlockable content within the game as legacy, but really in reality, legacy comes down to are you altering, are you physically altering elements of the of the game 
that make it change from game to game. So like, are you writing on the board? Are you tearing up cards? Or move? So that kind of legacy stuff, um, I, I'm fine with it. We just don't necessarily ever think creatively that way. Like we don't. We have we have no desire to do it ourselves. But if yeah, somebody yeah. pitches us this game where it's like this has legacy elements, if it m- makes sense in the game, we're we're open to it. I'm but trying to get a copy of uh, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, so I'm a fan. I just is that yeah, out now? It's out now. As I saw, I saw someone posted it was available. Oh, now, so. I didn't even know that. I, mean, I can't keep up with games. But yeah, <laughs> I, I do like them. I, I I'm just not like you know, it's not a make it or break it for me. Like it's not like I need to have a legacy thing or it's a big turnoff. I'm just kind of like it, it depends on the game really. So, um, any plans to translate some of that we already mentioned the translation thing? Uh, can you tell us what the Gen Con promos for the Street Masters and Egogo campaign are? Um, I think there was a is it a was it a max? I think I think it might have been the allies and um I'll, I'll if Scotty's here he can Scotty can mention in here um otherwise we'll have it added to the FAQs on the on the page. We're horrible at some of this. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, when when it would be great, uh, but when it would be sent the games bought in this S and oh um I'm wondering if they mean the pre orders or Oh yeah if it's if it's Brook if it's uh the Buddy Cop or Contra I think that was the, um those are I think pretty sure Contra is early next year. I think Buddy Cop should is be also right Q one or yeah it should be Q Q one I'm assuming. Um I'm not not positive yet though. So I Yeah they're I both just... they're both estimates because yeah. uh, after you know like we have projects in in Q obviously so uh, but Contra, is, I know Contra was planned for Q1. So. And someone asked, when is Myth and Gold planned for Kickstarter? No, nothing for concrete yet. Yeah, we're just hoping, hoping early, for the spring. Early Ho- hopefully spring 2021. Yeah. That's the plan. Um, I love New Sanctuary. I love No Sanctuary. Is a new edition possible for Blacklist with the IP peeled off? Um, I, I, all I'll say is that's one of my favorite designs. We didn't get to fully, deve- fully develop on our own. Um, so, I, yeah, I would love to do something with that concept. Yeah. Um, we have ideas, and I honestly, if people know us, they know that we love modern survival horror. Um, so. I'll say if AMC came up to and said, "Hey, will you guys redo this?" <laughs> like we'd say, "Okay." Well, no, no, I'm, I'm talking about just the game, like not not walking oh, dead, oh, just just yeah, just yeah. the actual mechanics. Yeah. So like because he said he said, "Will you do it with the, with the theme peeled off?" Essentially, so oh, the IP peeled off. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we I would I would definitely want to do a new. Uh, so yeah. It's we high, high, highly like maybe, maybe maybe that could be a horror series two game you know like, that's, that's what we're talking about that's what I keep telling you I want to do so um, when is any series Frosthaven did you apply some familiar element style to it like yeah when you uh, well mostly that's just it's kind of coming down to story really like kind of seeing what his world's doing and reading up on some of the characters in the story and just building off of that. Uh, mechanically, I'm just we just try to stay close to yeah. what the game does well, you know, not not bringing in our own elements too much. So, I, Isaac is pretty good at putting together a formula for scenarios, yeah. like you know, like ha- how you can take bits and pieces and put them together and make a scenario. Um, that I mean, he has there's so many scenarios in Gloomhaven. So. <laughs> Are there any miniature lines that you have in mind for the future that will fit into the Contra game? Um, that's going to be tough because unless we have something specific where it's... I mean, it might know, have some of the sci-fi stuff. Could be, yeah. Some of the sci-fi. Cause it, Contra a lot gets kind of kinda sci-fi. Yeah, so, so possibly, yeah. Uh, we try, we're going to try to keeping our scale pretty consistent, too. So hopefully like that'll be a, a thing as well. So miniature scale should be pretty similar. Um, so Scott is answering questions. Thanks, Scotty. Um, oh, what Scott time, here, what yeah. time Tuesday will Dire Alliance be launching? Uh, noon... Eastern, New Eastern, Eastern Daylight Time. I think, but Eastern Standard, you know, whatever, whatever however you want to. I think it's Eastern Daylight Time, but I call it. I still call it EST, even though it's probably EDT officially. Uh, no, recently I got back to the hobby, so never really heard of you guys. No offense, not taken. Uh, yeah, I found Fantasy Series One with an hour um, to go. So glad I did. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for thanks for those thanks for the support. That. I'm glad I'm glad to hear you're back in the hobby. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to it's hard for me to get out of it. So. Yeah, I saw somebody <laughs> also said Q1 for uh, I think they were talking about Myth and Goal, right? So like, yeah, also if you guys if anybody knows any uh, fans of like fantasy football games like Blood Bowl or Blitz Bowl or whatever, uh, let them know. I know I know a lot of the community look for new miniatures all the time, so you know they might find our miniatures, but also we got you know James making this really cool game, so we're hoping to spread the word about that. Uh, before next year so for the future have you thought of a game system that would bring together all the blacklist games characters into one game um like like, like uh, i said before that's not my ideal well <laughs> I, th- I think the only <laughs> exception would be something like something crazy like a like a league of legends style game yeah, or something like, like if we ever did a moba that would be it we would do like a moba and and have it be where you just you know it just brings together all these different like universes. heroes heroes of the storm that, that's the only way i personally like that kind of anachronism um because i i get so theme heavy that i don't want to mix 
those themes together. But when it comes to stuff like that, where it's kind of expected to in that genre, I'm I'm a little more loose on it. So, um, did you guys do you guys back in games yourself? What games are you back? I'm back in Darkest Dungeon right now and uh, Townsfolk Tussle. I think I rec- I think the most recent thing I backed wasn't even a game. It was the. Uh, um, Dwarven Forge Wildlands. I wanted that outdoor scenery um, for my miniatures games, uh, but I, yeah, we back stuff. Um, sometimes we we you know we end up talking with friends and other publishers that want to do trades or something, so we might trade projects for projects. But we still back games. We don't we don't know everybody, and we don't you know we don't have inside tracks to every single publisher. <laughs> yeah, and like so. the, the, some I always feel bad because some sometimes I'll just get sent Kickstarters after I already pledged them. So like I, I back a lot less because I don't know what I'll get sent just from random people I know in the industry, which is a nice perk. But I also still like to support like really cool projects that excite me. And um, honestly, I, I never played the video game Darkest Dungeon, but now I'm tempted to go buy it because I'm just so psyched. I will about say that, that I can that game. I mean, the miniatures style is really cool. Um, the only drawback to me is that they don't mix with my existing fantasy yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's a very different it's, scale. It's, it's, its, own, it's its own, you know, style. But it, it's really cool for that game. So, uh, I think, yeah, I think so. We'll call uh, it up here. Will you do a sci-fi miniature line? Yeah, I mentioned that. That's definitely something that we've discussed. Uh, that's something that I want to do. Um, the trick is just fig- just nailing down what type of sci-fi we want to yeah, do because there's, there's so of, many to choose from. Yeah. Um, and we kind of we can, we'll probably do something where it's like you know sci-fi series one. See, I, this... I would personally, I'm not sure everyone else feels, but I want I want a mix of like Starship Troopers and like Voltron, and then like whatever other kind of like common sci-fi stuff. Because like I love the whole like I love the Voltron sleekness, you know, and I like I like the mech aspect. Um, not necessarily just like you know unified mechs that become one bigger one. I just like the idea of like vehicular based stuff. And then I like you know the the bugs and Starship Troopers like shooting bugs and I, just I, I like I like the Starship Troopers aliens type type militaristic style but I also like you know Star Trek for the exploration because you go to different planets and you heard it here it's gonna be Voltron meets Star Trek meets Starship Troopers that'll be our that'll be our our unique uh, sci-fi setting. <laughs> um, let's, uh... Do other game companies back your games like Awaken Realms or Mythic Games? I'm not. I don't really follow. I'm not sure. I don't follow them on. Um, I've, I don't I've seen. I've seen a couple. Stars, but I've seen a couple. I know I, a lot I, of my I don't friends. Know about, a lot of my friends back us. Like people I know who work for the. For yeah, I was gonna say I don't know. I don't know about the publisher account themselves, but I know that people that work there have backed us, and we've you know we've discussed uh, our games with them um, at various conventions and such. Back when we had those, and hopefully someday soon we have in person conventions again. <laughs> um. They announced new. It's like yeah, it's like we're all caught up. I think right now. Yeah. So hopefully, um, you guys are excited about some of these ideas coming next year. Um, I apologize, we can't tease more about certain things because uh, our hands are tied about certain things. But um, I definitely want to let you know about Myth and Gold because that's you know coming up next after Dire Alliance. We're very excited about Dire Alliance. Um, so if you haven't checked out, there's a uh, quite a few. I think there's two or three gameplay videos out now um, on YouTube. Uh, I think uh, Rolling Solo has one, Not Board Gaming. I'm not sure who else is live yet because we had a couple that aren't going live yet. Um, but there, there'll be more. There'll be some on the Kickstarter page. Uh, if you have Tabletop Simulator, check out the demos. Um, there's, They're very two de- there's two demos. There's the raid mode and the battle mode, so you can try out both individually. Um, check it out, see what you think. Definitely check out the Kickstarter. I hope to see you guys there at the launch. Uh, get that free gift on day one. Um, you know, from both me and Brady and the rest of the team. You know, we we thank you guys for joining us and you know being excited about our projects. Uh, we we couldn't do this without without you guys' support. So yeah, we really appreciate it. Yep. Thanks for. And I hope you guys are me. having a great. Uh, ha- you had a great Spiel Digital um, 2020. I'm not sure. You know. If you guys went to lots of these live streams, or if they were, you know, if it worked out well, we'll see. Um, it's different. It's definitely new for us. Um, it's not nearly as exhausting as going to in-person conventions. So, if there's any, not any other last-minute questions, uh, I think, yeah, I think we hit everything. Yeah. Cool. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Hopefully.